helmet's on. warm up. Um, it's me, Mrs. Smith. I'm here with a Facebook Live. Let me do this. I've got this camera thing. Do I look all right? Hello. <laughs> I can't get my hair and the guitar into one shot. So, um, Can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Yes? Okay. Um, hello. Welcome to my first Ask Me Almost Anything. That was a little jam. And uh, to, some of you have not seen me play this guitar. This is the guitar that I won as part of the Shred for Your Life. Oh, my blouse just came undone. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had coffee today. I normally have tea and I had coffee and now I'm shredding and my blouse is bursting. Bursting with shred guitar. Um, I won the Shred for Your Life contest. Can you look at this crown they gave me? Can you believe this? Isn't it great? So they gave me this crown, and then I also won this guitar pick. The giant guitar pick you see back there. It's a big pick with all the guitars. And then I won this, a Telecaster, which I, I never would have purchased. 
Uh, if you can win a guitar shredding contest, do it. Because I never would have purchased a guitar like this for myself. I, I always thought, I don't know what I thought about it. I thought it was a country, I don't know. Anyway, I love to play it now sometimes. And as many of you know, the um, my flower guitar is with Ibanez in California at the custom shop. They're refurbishing it. I had such a lovely visit there. Mike at Ibanez, thank you so much. They were so very sweet and very understanding because I had a packed itinerary. And of course I showed up with a camera crew and all that. And they were very sweet and they're working on the guitar, uh, refurbishing it and they're putting some special wires in it from Mad Hatter. Now, this is my first uh, play Angry Inch. What about, um... <laughs> Hurricanes and rains, black and cloudy skies. I love Hedwig. I want to meet John Cameron Mitchell. This is my Ask Me Anything. People submitted questions um, about all kinds of things. You can try, you can give a whirl at asking questions on the Facebook. I will try to answer them, but I. I Please be aware that they, they whiz by so very quickly. So I will try to um, address any questions that come up um, on the Facebook Live. Oh look, here I am on my computer. Well, I'm gonna share this with my friends. <laughs> this is so silly. <laughs> All right, so we haven't asked me anything. First question is from, this is Megan Anderson, Kimmy is lying, I think you're the best. Thank you, babe. This is from Chris John C. How long have you been playing guitar and did you find the instrument difficult to learn? Um, the story of, um, the story of how I learned to play guitar is a long one. And it's the topic of my show, uh, While My Guitar Gently Shrieks. So I, I don't want to give it all away because I do need to kind of have some exclusivity around that content. That's what my social media strategist says. What it boils down to, um, kittens, is that in the 90s, I was kidnapped and held for ransom by a Norwegian death metal band and suffered the Stockholm Syndrome. And if that sounds like a lot of Scandinavia for one anecdote, welcome to my life! But it's really serious. It's not, it's not, I don't know why people think this is comedy. It's like, it's not, it's, it's not stand-up comedy. If anything, it's stand-up tragedy. I was held in a closet for three months by these death metalers. They were desperate kids. They wanted money. They were, they were, so anyway, they held me in that closet. There was a flower guitar in there. And I, and I just slowly just, I had nothing else to do. Nothing. And I remember, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. I had nothing else to do. So you just kind of, you know, you just kind of do what you have to do to survive. Ultimately, I took over the band. And that was really frightening because... The internal politics of a Norwegian death metal band is some pretty scary stuff. I mean, this is the 90s. They were really, they were living on the, I was living on the edge. And they were living on the edge in an entirely different way. But it was the kind of scene where your band would try to assassinate you and, and they were strategizing against me and I was forming alliances with the bass player and then the drummer. And it, it just got really <laughs> strange. So, yes. Uh, no, I did not find it difficult at first. I had nothing else to do. And then I would heard them in the next room with their playing, you know. And I mimicked it. So no, I didn't find it hard to do because I had nothing else to do. Eddie Dorman is asking about my pedal board. This is, this is a seemingly endless array of questions from the guitar players. Listen, I will post pictures of what I'm playing right now. Um, I've got, I see Scotty Smith is out there. Hi, Scotty. <laughs> Scotty sent me this Lady Evil, which I've started working with recently. It's a fuzz pedal. 
I usually use the um, the rage sound inside the amplifier. This is a fuzz pedal. Wait, I have the phaser on. I mean, I haven't written the song yet, but... Scotty, I'm having fun playing with it. I love it, kid. What do I have on this pedal board? I have a wah-wah pedal. I have a delay pedal. This, the, the pedal board was set up by my intern. And it, everybody, if you can get yourself an intern, do it. There's gobs of kids out there just looking for free opportunities. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if they come from money and they don't need to work, but you can find them. And I suggest that you do that. And this intern set up this pedal board. I don't know what these boxes do. And they often frighten me. There's a delay pedal. There's a wah-wah pedal. Love that. There's the Miku pedal. Other than the Miku pedal, I have a phaser, MXR. That's pretty much it. I'm not into a lot of gear. I don't, I don't like a lot of... It's confusing. I will segue to talk about the Miku pedal. My drummer, Paul Amorisi, suggested I buy the Miku pedal. He had seen someone play it. I plugged in the, the Miku pedal. <clears throat> Immediately, melodies poured out of my fingers. The melody came out incomplete as in complete, it no, came out complete. The intern was there with a the recorder, recording. We put the melody into a computer. We mapped it. Let's get Carlisle. Let's get Carlisle. There he is. We mapped the melody to a click. The Miku we mapped it to a click. Hi, Adamantium, darling. Um, we, we mapped it to a click. And then my sound intern started to show me how to paint with music. And we added melodies underneath the other the melody, say so the main melody, and then we added other notes, which creates harmony and context. And we just painted and painted and painted with sound, and painted and painted and painted with sound. And then came the visions, and so my video team got to work on the visions, and they put me in front of a green screen. And there was a regular Mrs. Smith, which looked like me, and then there was this other wraith Mrs. Smith eyes in a white outfit and they were both playing the white guitar I have the white uh, the other white guitar and and then my video team started to add fire and lightning and, and it was just so exciting but it took months it absolutely took months so I'm glad people have enjoyed it um, I hope you'll share it with your friends that's the Miku song <laughs> Next question. Okay. 
What are your earliest musical influences? This comes from Tyson Evans. Earliest musical influences? No, you wouldn't know any of them. You wouldn't know any of them. Um, there are people like um, Banjo Slim. These were people who were in the town where I was a little girl. I, I, originally, I grew up, some of you know this about me. I was born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts on Beacon Hill. Hello! Hello, Carlos! Um, I'm trying to follow the questions as you whiz by, but it's just a tiny, they, they fly by just so quickly. So hello to everybody. Um, I grew up in Boston, Massachusetts, in a brownstone, and then uh, tragedy, disarray, dissolution plagued my family. I, I don't want to talk about it on a Sunday. Please don't make me. I, I'm set to go to a Codependence Anonymous meeting later and I'll deal with it then. <laughs> it was father and everything that he brought to the table, which was a lot. We ended up on a farm in upstate New York, living on a relative's farm. And there were musicians there. And it was just, they were just people. They were the ordinary people, just like me. They weren't set apart from everybody. You know, you did the blacksmith and then you were Banjo Slim in the evenings. So Banjo Slim was, was terrific. He's Banjo Slim, he's Banjo Slim. And um, who was the other person? There was a crooner, a romantic crooner, who sang with a piano. Um, and his name was Antonio Mendoza. Nobody knew where he was from. He kept his, where, uh, his origins a mystery to all the lady, uh, ladies, and he would croon with a piano player. Again, you don't know any of these people. And then later on, it was Bert Bachrock, of course, and, and, and those types. But it's all old stuff. It's nothing that you're interested in. It's nothing that you're interested in. All right, this is from Moses Rottenberg. What do you think of Vinnie Vincent? I don't, I don't know Vinnie Vincent. Send links. I'd love to learn more about Vinnie Vincent. Hi, Mrs. Smith, watching from Japan. I like your style, Japan. Hello, babe. I want to come to Japan. How do we do it? I've got a plan of tour. I want to go to Brazil and Japan. Um, all right. Chrissy Lundy wants to know about how I've maintained such good posture at my extreme age. This is something guitar players, singers, actors, musicians... Take note. It's called the Alexander Technique. And I have a friend in town. Uh, I'm in New York City right now. I have the occasion to be in New York City. Hi, Kevin. And... Um, uh, my friend Fabio here does Alexander Technique. It's not like massage, it's not like acupuncture, it's nothing like that. It's a whole inner orientation where you're going forward and up and, and easefulness. So I've been very lucky that I can afford these Alexander Technique. Alexander Technique. Especially you singers. Um, Sean Prawn wants to know, how do you get your hair into such stunning shape? Does it look all right? <laughs> Well, I have a team. I have a beauty team. If you can get a beauty team. I know people say to me, Mrs. Smith, look, I'm not gonna... I have resources. I've got money, okay? I, 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 I married a lot. <laughs> and I married lucky and I married rich. And, and so I have the resources to afford a beauty team. And people judge me on this, you know, and the blogosphere has gone, is blowing up over these revelations about my past. But this is what it was like. When you were a girl, like I was, and you went, you ran away from the farm and went to the big city, and you got, this is what you did. You got a job in the steno pool, you got a room at the hotel for vulnerable young girls, and you, you know, you showed a little leg to the boss, you dated the boss, you divorced the you married the boss, divorced the boss, showed a little leg to the boss's best friend. You know what I'm saying? You just, you married and married and married until you had a nest egg. And then once you had a nest egg, you said, okay, now I can really look for love. And it took me 13 marriages to get that nest egg. Don't judge, please. This is, please, it was another era. So I'm lucky enough to have resources. Um, this is one of my, this is my little studio. It's in an undisclosed location in Brooklyn. Please don't try to find it. Please don't. 
And this is one of just the lovely little spaces that I get to have. It's like a little a gem for me. I come out to Brooklyn and I can explore. I've got my music, I've got my guitars, I've got my... <laughs> My wife is a new player. She's no spring chicken. Any advice for her? Practice! Anyway, I'm just gonna get over this question really quick. Hair, you have to have a beauty team. Get one. Save up. Don't, think of this. Put it this way. Don't have a latte. Instead, save it up and hire a glam team, a hairstylist, a makeup person. And they just come over in the morning. You sit there and you watch the shows and they get you ready and it, it really is within reach of everybody I think so all right advice for the new players hi Bill Buck I saw you joined people have been asking me this how do I play fast how do I what is it the shred they want to shred I love this shred it's out like lettuce you can't skip a step now look you all want to you want to play the way you want to play Okay, I play the way I like to play. I develop my playing style in a closet. Three months, kidnapped by a Norwegian death metal band in the 90s. You may not develop such a playing style. You may want to have a little, a little, a little messiness. You may not, not want to be very precise. You may, that may be your rough soul. So you have to find your own playing style. You have to find your own playing style. Now, if you wish to play precisely, or a little more precisely, if you wish to play very fast, perhaps you too have that kind of manic edge, you gotta start slow. Uh, I was at a music store and I was doing one of my favorite little things, which is the, um, the one-handed thing. So... I was doing that and the guy said, how do you do it? First of all, um, I am left-handed. So this is my strong hand, okay? This is my strong hand. This is my weak hand. So I can't do what uh, they call alternate picking. I can't do that quickly, but I have a lot of strength in my... The young fellow said, how do you do it? I said, you gotta start slow. So he started to do it. And it was like this, it was like this. No, 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 he was trying to go too fast too soon. So I said, slow it down, get this right. You gotta do the hammer on and the pull off. But you gotta get it clear. Someone wants sweet picking. <laughs> Sweep up this mess! Christina, Christopher! Sweep up this mess. So you gotta start slow. Start slow. Um, Mrs. Smith Unplugged, Jody Symes wants to know. I don't know. I, I'm not very good at the um, acoustic playing. I have an acoustic. Maybe if someone else played the acoustic, I'd do it. Thank you. I love the jacket too. Shane Hendricks, have you thought of getting another cat and moving on from Carla? <laughs> Have you thought of getting another cat and moving on from Carlisle?
comes to Carlisle. The Carlisle issue. Everybody needs to strip the terror away from the Carlisle issue. Hello, Danny Hines. This is the deal. Carlisle is alive. He's thriving. He's surviving. He's having the time of his life out there. I just got off the phone with Pet Psychic to the Stars, Miss Sylvia Cleo. If anyone needs a referral, she's the best. Sylvia Cleo said, because I, 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 I had a session with her. I flew all the way to Bangladesh to have a session with Sylvia just last week. And I said, Sylvia, where is Carlisle? This has been going on for two and a half years last Tuesday. And she said, Smithy, he's having the time of his life. He's enjoying himself. He loves you. He cares about you. He thinks of you. But he's also having the time of his life. And I said, but, but, but what is he doing? She said, he's sitting on a, a little porch in the country. He's just a little country kitty cat. He's in some little town somewhere and the mailman comes by, waves, drops off the mail and he goes, you know, a little bird flies by. She said, he is enjoying the peace and quiet. Because of course, when it was Carlisle and I, it was a very hectic lifestyle. There was a lot going on all the time. And as far as getting over Carlisle and replacing him, he cannot be re replaced. Look, yes, I am a cat lady, all right? You know, branding-wise, I'm a cat lady. But that, that's the number two level. At the number one level, I'm a Carlisle lady, okay? So it's all about this kid. And you would not be able to get over this kitty cat if you had lived with him too. I mean, I would wake up in the morning and I would just think, oh, another day, you know, staring into the middle distance and listening to the silent screaming. And I'd look down at my feet and there Carlisle would be. You know, he'd come out from behind a blanket like that and I'd think, oh boy, he wants another adventure. And I'd say, not today, kid. I can't do it. I'm depressed. I'm just, I can't move. I'm paralyzed. I can't speak. I can't move. And he'd, he'd go, Ew. and I'd say, a, a hot air balloon. Ride? Carlisle, no! I can't go on a hot air balloon. I'm terrified of heights. And, and then he'd go like this. He'd go, and that meant stick with me, kid. You'll be all right. Next thing I know, I would be in a hot air balloon, up in the air, screaming, laughing. Carlisle's on a picnic basket eating a ham sandwich. The hot air balloon driver is, is a pork pie hat and a missing tooth, and he's laughing, and I'm living. That's what that cat did for me. Never get over it. We will find Carlisle, but we're not tormented. Hi. Hello, everybody. Okay. That was Carlisle. All right. This is an odd question. A YD Go Hill. This is from Instagram. How to practice to progress. Uh, they mean the guitar. I can pr uh, listen to that. That sounded terrible. Practice to progress, here's the deal. You gotta go slow. You gotta do, get each note clear. If you're going like this, no, you gotta stop, go back, slow down. Get it clear. But at some point, you just gotta go for it. You can't, I'm not one to practice with a metronome. I'm not, I don't practice, I never have. I, when I was trapped in that closet, <laughs> And those, that Norwegian death metal band was out there. They barely threw me nutrition. Never mind a metronome. If you have questions about, uh, somebody asked me about p alternate picking. I don't know, I don't pick every note. I can't, I can't, I'm not that fast. When I'm going up a lot of time, it's like this. Um, uh, let's see if I go down. I, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. 
Somebody needs to slow it down and figure it out. Uh, Paul Gilbert or somebody, they'd know. Slow down before you speed up. You can't st skip a step. Caitlin asks, can you tell us about your morning rituals? Nightly rituals. Mornings, um, I don't know about you kids. I wake up, uh, I stare at the ceiling, I listen to the silent screaming for about two hours. Um, the silent screaming tells me, don't get up, don't bother, don't move, don't speak to anybody. Nobody wants to hear from you. They're all done with you. All the likes have dried up. Uh, the silent screaming tells me you have nothing to offer. Um, this is a silent screaming that I have to endure every morning. I listen to it, I hear it out, and then I say, not today, silent scream, not today. So I do get up, and I have a little tea, and if you're like me today, I have a little coffee. Yeah! <laughs> Um, and then the glam team comes over. The glam team does all of this. They, they pick on my outfits. And then I usually hop on Facebook. I say hello to my kittens. I hop on Instagram. Typically, I have a great deal of appointments. There's medical appointments. Um, I have to see my medical team. I have an amazing support team. I have a therapist uh, who, of course, has a PhD in uh, psychoanalysis. I have a psychiatrist who, of course, is an MD. And then I have an amazing aromatherapist who has an MFA in sculpture. And so I see all of them. Oh, here's another question. Are you Steve Vai? This is the number one question. Uh, no, I'm not Steve Vai. Okay, I don't know why people think this guy is like, a, a, you know, a rock, a real life rock star. I mean, he's like a real rock. He's like, he's not like me. He's like the real thing, you know. I don't know why he would be dressed up in a disguise like this. Um, the other thing is, okay, he, he couldn't be caught dead playing one of these, okay, because he's got one of those endorsement deals. So he couldn't play, he doesn't have the freedom that I have. And second of, third of all, look at the hands. Look how tiny these hands are. You see this? He's got hands that are like, uh, have you seen that movie Alien, when the thing goes on to the face? He's got hands that are like that. They, I mean, they really are. Stella Vi, maybe. Uh, maybe we're distant relatives. But no, I, and I don't know what to do because there's a picture of me and him together and it doesn't stop these rumors. I think he and I have to hang out at some point. Torres Voodoo on Instagram asks, Metallica or Megadeth? Now this goes with another question, which is Slash or Buckethead. Stop it now. It's never a choice. There are no winners and losers in art ever. I don't think I have to choose. Now, I do not know Megadeth. I do not know their work. So I could not, I could not choose. I do not know Megadeth. I know Metallica because we do... Um... We do a song of Metallica's In My Show my solo show, and I love it. And the music video that goes with the song inspired me. Someone sent it to me, they said, Mrs. Smith, you have to watch this music video. It will stop your soul. And I watched it, and they've got the long hair. And they're going, ah, and they're spinning their long hair. Dear Mrs. Smith, can you name my guitar, please? It's Niven S. Gem Jr. with DiMarzio. Can you name, oh, name your guitar. Dave Glover wants me to name his guitar. It's Niven S. Gem Jr. DiMarzio's. Uh, let's see, Dave Glover, um, why don't you name it, um, why don't you name it, um, it's a white guitar, mine's called Ghosty, Ghosty's back here, he's tired, I'm not gonna play Ghosty today, why don't you name your guitar, um, Marsha, name it Marsha, um, Brett, how does, how does one book you for a gig, um, message me, direct message me, babe, I'm available for bookings. <laughs>
Um, do you think the majority of shredders hide behind why? Yes, I do. I'm the number one offender. Christopher, good question. Yes. Everyone says, Kirk Hammett from Metallica abuses the wah. Not as much as Mrs. Smith. And I challenge, I challenge Kirk Hammett to a wah off. And the wah off, it's a wah off. I hereby, somebody shared this video with Kirk Hammett of Metallica. I, Mrs. Smith, on this date, I, Mrs. Smith, reigning queen of the Shred for Your Life contest, I, Mrs. Smith, Hereby challenge Kirk Hammett to a wav. Who can use the wav the most in a guitar solo? So Kirk, get ready, because you've met your match, kiddo. <laughs> you look like D. Snyder's mom. D. Snyder is a great kid. He went head to head with, well, she was a friend of mine. Tipper Gore was a friend of mine. We ran in the same circles. And she got on that PMRC. I wasn't a, I wasn't a shredder yet. I, but she got on that PMRC. And I just thought to myself, you need to get a life, Tipper. You need to get a life. Uh, what's, going, what's not going on with Al Gore at home that you're going after Twisted Sister? <laughs> so I love Dee Schneider. Um, Kirk Hammett's great. I love his solo. Uh, <laughs> She's doing a parody of Kirk Hammett in that solo when she uses the wah. He doesn't use the wah in that solo. See what an abuser I am? Metallica or Megadeth sl uh, slash or Buckethead. I am against um, these types of contests. I don't want to say a, a bad word against a Megadeth. I don't know who they are. I'm sure they're terrific. I'm sure they have something to offer. I think Megadeth. Um, yes. I love, I love the name. I'm... I think of, I feel like I'm on the verge of a mega death at the, at the, every day. Slash or Buckethead? Boy, oh boy. There's no, there's no, it's not a contest. They both won. Why did they both win? Because they're both originals. Why did they both win? Because they're both singular voices. Now I wish to get together with this Buckethead. I wish to get together, I know he does not speak with words. And I wish to get together with this buckethead and commune with him. Commune with music, commune with silence. If anybody has the, 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 the contact information for Buckethead, please let me know. Oh, what, you want to hear Ingbe mom scene? I can't play like Ingbe. <laughs> Ingbe Momsen is the best. If you want to play fast, ask Ingbe Momsen. He's absolutely terrific. Um, where can I see you live in New York City? Um, I will be doing a show at some point in New York. I don't know when. Probably in July. And I'm not sure where. I'm going to be doing a solo show, Dimebag. <laughs> I wish I could have met Dimebag. Blessings to him. He's such a great guy. He was really good. Um, so I will be doing a show. Let's see, I'm in, in New York, I'm doing Snap Impressions in June. And then I'm doing a solo show in, um, in July. And then I'll be doing a live band show in September. <laughs> doesn't it? Um, and I will be doing, what else would I be doing? So Ju July I'll be doing a show in New York City, solo, just me. Um, and then we'll be bringing the live band show back in September. And then I hope to go to Portland, Oregon in August. And I hope to go back to LA. 
Yes, the sweeping, uh, some people think, thank you, Mark, some people think the sweeping is overdone. I, what people don't realize, everyone's asking me if I'll do a guitar tutorial series. I might. Um, and if I do a guitar tutorial series, it will be comprehensive. It will not be easy. It will be incredibly, what will be difficult will not be, that's what not, that, that won't be the hard part. The hard part will be, are you willing to face your shadow? It will be called the Grief and Rage Psychosomatic Guitar, Advanced Guitar Techniques Encounter Group. And it's going to be an, it's going to be not, look, everyone's putting on these guitar camps, and I think they're great. Uh, Steve is doing one, Joe Satch Triani is doing one, um, who else is doing one? Pliny is doing one with Plintervilles, uh, Plinter, Plinterville. Everyone's doing these guitar camps. John Petrucci is doing one, and it's all, I wish, I just want to go for the food. They've got gourmet food that looks terrific. My question is, are they asking the difficult questions? Are they helping their, these kids confront the shadow? Because I, when I was alone in that closet in Norway, suffering from the Stockholm Syndrome, which forced me to merge with this instrument, my voice had to merge with its voice. <laughs> with the guitar's voice. It was scary. It was a dark night of the soul. Are these guitar camps offering, is that one of the packages? Like, you get your own room, you get meals, and you also you have an encounter with the dark night of the soul. Because at Mrs. Smith's guitar camp, that would be a must-have on, I don't care if you are sleeping in a ditch outside, if you're doing the $99 a night deal. Sleeping in the ditch by the access highway picking up your guitar and coming into the conference room for the lesson in the morning. Everyone, regardless of cost, structure, and price point, every single one of you will have an encounter with the dark night of your soul. And if, if anyone is offering a guitar lesson and not offering that, it's fraudulent. It's fraudulent. There, I said it. I said it. So, people are... <laughs> are offering, if, if I were to offer a video tutorial um, or a guitar clinic, there would be, um, you know, for instance, um, fly, flight or fight or flight trust falls. So there you are, you're doing your favorite riff. <laughs> And then Mrs. Smith says, fall! And then you have to fall backwards while doing the riff, and while you're falling, it goes to a whole other level. There would be other exercises at my guitar camp, like um, the circle of fifths shame spiral, because we bring so much pain body to this work. People say, I can't play fast enough. It's because there's pain body in all of your hands. Well, I, I, I practice and practice and practice. I can't, I can't get them to move any faster. That's because they're stuck in the past. Each finger has a traumatic memory. Ow! Summer camp! Ow! First grade! I had to give an art presentation and I had a panic attack. Ow! Senior prom! I was rejected. Oh! College! Um, I took an anthropology class and realized that my cultural mindset is not the global cultural mindset. Existential. Ow! My first divorce! All of these are alive in your hands. You'll never play faster than you're playing if you don't confront the traumatic memories in your fingers. I've confronted them. Some of them. But I still have my limitations. Uh, play Boys Don't Cry by The Cure. Um... <laughs> Ground control to Mrs. Smith. So, um, what other questions are there? Anthropology class is what it's all about. Um, yes, if you. So, uh, the other thing, um, I need to say this. It's the. Today is LGBTQIA, LMNOP, Pride celebration, and they're all marching on Washington right now. 
and I couldn't go because it's, it's one of those days where I can't go outside. And uh, I wish I was there playing the... Um, the, the <laughs> Um, so, what I want to say is, to all my LGBTQIA fans and kittens and allies, allies, thank you. I love you all. You have my support. You're marching, standing up for your rights. I'm right there with you every step of the way. Because if anyone has been here for Mrs. Smith, it's the LGBTQIA community. They rushed. They rushed. They bum rushed my show. I said, uh, I said, being LGBTQIA is not my personal truth, but um, I, I accept your love and support. And they, they. They got me. They got me before anybody else got me. So all those uh, gay pride, it's June, it's gay pride month. Have a blast out there. Take care of each other. Whatever you are, be proud of it. If you're a guitar shredder and people say, that's out, that music is tacky, that's, uh, that's outdated. Don't, don't be into guitar shredding. Say, I shred with pride. That's what I do. So everybody stand up for yourselves. Be individuals. Um, the other final thing is um, hunties.com is where I have my merchandise. Please do go there, check it out, buy a t-shirt. We have two different kinds of t-shirts and we have iPhone cases. I'm going to post the link. Hello, darling. So uh, pick up those, um, that merchandise. And um, what else? I guess that's it. Are there any other questions? I'm your new idol. Oh, that's sweet. Hi, Nikki, babe. How are you, kid? I'm going to play guitar. I'm just going to do a little more jamming. I love this track. I'm going to post this track. Um, <laughs> yes, if they keep adding letters out of Mantium. That's true. And that's, that's A-OK -okay in my book. I say I am a part of that community because they stood by me when no one else did. I'm going to post this track and uh, so you kids can jam, it, jam with it at home. I didn't create this track, but I love it. And then some people have asked about the pedals. So I'm going to post some of the pedals, pictures of the pedals that I have. I don't like to get bogged down in that too much. Here we go. <laughs>